only way you're gonna get better, man, you gotta put the work in. Brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers! Everything that we do out here is for a purpose. Hey, you gotta get in there and fight now. You gotta get in there and fight. Let's stop that talking and let's just do it, bro. Family on three, one, two, three. Hey. A primetime kickoff on an SEC West stage is the perfect proving grounds. The Aggies have been waiting on it to live up to expectations, for everything to click. They've been waiting all day for their chance. A week ago, the Aggies went 1-0. It's all that matters in this program. That message does not change this Saturday. Two things talked about from day one on Monday. We want to be 1-0 today, whatever that focus is. Not on anything else, not down the road. What do you have to do individually to be 1-0? And, oh, and we want to start what today? Amen. We want to start fast, all three phases. Offense, defense, special teams, start fast. We have not played our best football as a team yet. No better night than tonight. All right, let's get it on. The moments before kickoff. One last calm before the storm the game brings. It's when the player realizes this is the reason for the work he's put in. Off seasons, spring ball, August camps, sleds, drills, thousands of reps, they all lead to 60 minutes in the spotlight. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, our earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, 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 forgive us same thing we talked about all week. All right, start fast offense. Start fast defense. Start fast special teams. We have not played our best game as a team yet. Right? Sir. Right? Sir. Let's start fast. Let's play our ass off. Put this thing together. Let's get us a real game tonight. Let's go. Bring it up, baby. Hey. Oh. I need all this. All we got today. Hey. Hey. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Memorial Herman, official sports medicine partner of Texas A&M Athletics. You are looking live at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. Auburn is aiming to become bowl eligible. Texas A&M, though, is determined to remain relevant in the SEC West. Sean White has a left leg injury, wasn't able to practice. That's why Jeremy Johnson's back in the lineup. He was the starter at the start of the year under huge expectations. Tell us about this young man, Kyler Murray. He has unbelievable foot quickness. When he runs, you'll see tonight, it looks like he gets shot out of a cannon. Speedy Doyle is the deep man for AM, and this one's underway. Doyle's got one here, and here he comes. Breaks free with that great speed, spin move. Terrific return to the 40 yard line. Play action. Here comes Murray with that great quickness. Fire caught. First down. Speedy Noel. Here comes Murray with that first step trying to get the left edge. He does. Carson pounds to the 30 yard line and another Aggie first down. Really trying to establish a physicality right now early in this game. They bring Kirk in motion and they'll send him back. And it's a little bit of a slip screen. And it was read beautifully by Casanova McKenzie. Brutal, it's long as 55 yards, easily in his range. On the money. Indeed, Jess, that would have been good for another eight <laughs> yards. He puts the Aggies up with a 50-yarder. 
A field goal puts the Aggies in front. The promising drive was halted by a third down drop. The Aggies will have to cash in on chances like these for the remainder, or else a cold, damp night could turn in to a long one. Johnson with his size fires for another first down. Melvin Ray to the 25 yard line. Robinson again with the handoff. Busts across the 20. Maintains his balance. Gus Malzahn coming with the whole package. Fires it to Davis on the outside. Davis tries to the pylon. Got it. Touchdown. How about Jeremy Johnson? Murray moves to the left. He moves the pocket. He's lethal for a little guy. And he keeps it. Kyler Murray. Got a first down. That's that baseball slide. Kyler off the play action. We're gonna throw it deep end zone. Got one on one. It picked off, I believe. This was a good decision by Kyler Murray. He had the matchup he wanted. Damian Ratley is wide receiver, one-on-one -on -one with a post. And how about the true freshman, Carlton Davis, just wrestling this football away from the wide receiver. Robinson with a little counter move, breaks free, 35, 40. You can see why this young man was so highly recruited. He was injured in Auburn's opening game of the season. Now he's healthy again. Auburn obviously dedicated to the run. The Aggies haven't been able to stop it. There's Ricardo Lewis. Robinson pounds, reaches for the end zone. Got it. Touchdown. Auburn is on the move, taking yardage in bunches, ending drives with touchdowns. But the Tigers are having trouble stopping the Aggies. It seems only the Aggies can stop themselves. Kyler Murray has to get this thing orchestrated. They need to find the end zone. Murray straight back. Beautiful snatch by Doyle for the first down. Carson got the right edge. And he's to the 32. Quickly out of his hands. And Seals Jones breaks the tackle. Looking to that right, going to the end zone. Intercepted at the goal line. Intercepted by Garrett. Three times AM gets no points from a first half drive that treks inside the Auburn 40 yard line. Two interceptions and a turnover on downs, the fruitless results. The opportunities are out there. They've got 30 more minutes to seize them. The Pulse, Texas AM football is brought to you by Pepsi, official soft drink of Texas A&M Athletics. Coach, a couple of turnovers in the first half, just a field goal on the board. What's the biggest challenge facing your offense? Well, you know, we got to let it come to us. You know, it, it, we had two nine play drives. We get nothing. You know, we got a field goal. We got two turnovers, not in the red zone, in the end zone. So, you know, we got to complete drives. Our defense settled down in the second quarter, played pretty good. Continue to play good defense and convert in the red zone. What do you think is the biggest key to building the rhythm offensively with your freshman quarterback and the rest of this offense? Just, he's got to be comfortable, you know, and then uh, we also got to be able to, to uh, in some of these tight sets, maybe take some shots down the field. And, and yeah, I think he's comfortable with that. Uh, we got to mix it up a little bit more. All right, thanks for your time. All right, thanks. Coach Sumlin with me down here on the field. Coach, total yards just about even, but how do you finish those drives, turn them into points? Yeah, I mean, we, we turned it over in the end zone. So, you know, we've moved the ball pretty well. Our defense settled down in the second quarter. Uh, we got we to pick up where we left off defensively in the second quarter, get some stops, and, and uh, complete drives. We'll be all right. Saw it rain here so hard one time. How hard was it, Dave? You could not see the other side of the field. Really? Yeah. All right. They get the first touch. This is where Texas A&M defensively has to get better. They have to win first and second down and set up third and long situations so they can take advantage of their tremendous pass rush led by Miles Garrett. Carry on Johnson now is alongside the quarterback looking for him back downfield. Fire sideline. Got him. 
Jackson, he's been the story really on offense. He's been the workhorse already, 125 yards rushing. Shots in, incomplete, and that's a fourth down coming up. The field goal is good. That will make it a 17 to three lead. And here we go. On the move, it is intercepted. There is the youngster's third interception of the night, Blake Countess. Play action, rolls right, cocking his arm, throws the ball, and that's picked off. This could be a critical turnover. If Auburn catches in a touchdown, this one is really going to put the Aggies in a hole. The defense kept Auburn out of the end zone, forcing a field goal. The offense simply cannot afford another empty possession. Hanging for the first down is Troy Carson carrying a load here. Fires to Reynolds and got the first down. Pitched it to the outside. And Reynolds is to the 36-yard line. The key on these screens is to get it out of your hands fast. Here comes Carson up the middle now. Big hole. Explodes. Powerful run to the 15-yard line. The Aggies could be in business. Here comes Murray now. He's keeping it. Coming to the right. And he is stopped wow. at the two-yard line. And I mean, there's a penalty flag on it. Targeted defensive player. Offense number nine. Previous play is under review. We talked about it earlier, Brent. This game has gotten physical very quickly. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. It's second down. <laughs> First time that's gone in our favor. Jay Kubinak is at quarterback. Right now, you've got man-to-man -man all over the field. Kubinak might have to make a play. Looks to throw high, end zone grabbed. Speedy Doyle. Touchdown, Aggies. The Aggies got within 10 points. Ultimately, they ran out of chances. Auburn traversed more ground with the run game, kicked two more field goals, and the A&M hopes of victory vanished in the mist. He'll drop back and take the knee, and uh, that's going to do it. And the uh, game will end, and the Aggies will score 10 points in this one and drop it 26 to 10 the final. Auburn and the visiting team continues to win in this series. I think what you're worried about right now if you're a Texas A&M fan, certainly if you're head coach Kevin Sumlin, is the injuries that have happened at quarterback right now. Because Kyler Murray leaves this game with an apparent head injury. Remember, Kyle Allen, who was your starter, injured his throwing shoulder against Alabama a few weeks back. He didn't look like himself in a loss against Ole Miss. Now, you've got the Juco transfer, Jake Hubenek, potentially taking over for a team moving forward that's trying to close out this season strong as well. So a lot of football left still for Texas A&M and the quarterback position, the biggest area of concern. The Polls, Texas A&M football is brought to you by ASCO, your place for case construction equipment in Texas. Where does this team, uh, you know, go from here with three games left on the on the schedule? We're gonna work hard, continue to work hard every single week, like uh, we've been doing, and, and just try to correct um, all the things that they, they went wrong, and really, really uh, take a take a look in the mirror, see see who we are, see what uh, what uh, we need to correct, and to just go from there. This week the goal wasn't reached. The Aggies didn't get to one and zero. Everyone must look within. It just was disappointing. You know, I think that um, there are a lot of things that, that happened during the week that we thought were positive signs. I thought we practiced well. I thought our, our, our plan was good. Um, you know, execution becomes uh, what it's all about in the game. And, you know, the, the truth of the matter is if you, you have three turnovers and you don't get any, so you lose the turnover ratio, and a uh, team rushes for over 300 yards, it's hard to win that football game. An opportunity lost, but six and three, and three more tries at it before the bowl game. We got plenty of play for, and, and uh, anybody who watched college football Saturday sees that. You know, you, you, wherever wherever you play, um, uh, it, it doesn't go always according to what people think. So, 
You know, I think what's important right now, as I've said for the last four or five weeks, you know, we've got a lot of guys on this team that are sophomores, that are in critical roles, on, on, particularly on defense. What we have to do is not let this affect the rest of the year. We, we've got to see where we are. We've got to move on. Uh, are we disappointed about Saturday? You bet. You know, could we have played better? You bet. But that's behind us, right? We, we can't dwell on that. We've got to move on. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Monday represents a new day, regardless of the previous Saturday's outcome. The Aggies turn to their senior class that will soon take to Kyle Field for the final time. Let's be sharp today, no matter mistakes. Let's go family on three, one, two, three. Family. They tell you it flies by, but you don't, you're like, especially when you're, especially when you're a freshman during like training camp, they're like, oh, it flies by here. Like, oh, I have to do this three more times. It's not gonna fly by at all, but uh, it's just really crazy. For the group that came in with Kevin Sumlin and the SEC, the clock is ticking. There's 180 minutes of guaranteed football left. And when you look at it that way, uh, that, that's an eye opener. And, and so, you know, the last time, you know, those guys run out on, on Cal Field will be special. You never think that's gonna be your moment. I remember when Kevin ran out and Jake ran out, I was like, man, like, they're so old. Like, that's never gonna be me, that's never gonna happen. And it's here, it's like, wow, like, it's time to grow up, you know? And I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a happy moment, but a sad moment at the same time, knowing that's my last game here. I mean, I mean, it really does fly by, and I'm gonna cherish the moments that I have spent on this field with uh, my teammates and the fans. I just fell in love with the place. It was, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I knew within the first 24 hours I wanted to come here. Uh, it was just the atmosphere. And you know, the people, how friendly everyone is, the traditions, the facilities, the coaches, the teammates, it just was the right place for me to come. Really getting to experience the 12th man, the, the atmosphere of games here, and it's just something you couldn't beat. It was just like, it was life changing, really. You came in there and you saw how much the fans really did care, and I was like, man, I mean, this is a place I want to spend the next four years. You know, the coaches' staff was, you know, they did a great job on selling me on AM, and and then once I learned more about the 12th man and the atmosphere and how things work around here, I just fell in love and wanted to be an Aggie. I came up close with a lot of these guys, especially Trey C, because I came in with him at the same time. You know, we transferred at the same time and whatnot. A lot of these guys I know that I have a um, relationship with when football is all over with. Years down the road, how will they be remembered? What mark do they hope to make? I want Aggies to remember me as just a hardworking kid um, that loved the game of football, loved his teammates, and that wanted to win. I was a hard hat type of guy. I just worked. I didn't really, I didn't really get into the, you know, the crazy noise. I just wanted to work every single day. Just as a guy who was humble and came in and did whatever the coaches asked me to do, you know, just to win each and every game, you know. I, Played my hardest every snap and really gave it all I got. This is a completely different situation than they signed up for. Uh, the facilities, Cal Field, uh, they're the first group that knew that they were going to go in the SEC uh, and, and, and said, you know what, that's what I want to do. And I'm coming to a to do it and, and I'm particularly um, proud and, and, and forever indebted to these guys.